knocked and ready to rock. For this knocked and ready to rock series, I want to go through the entire process that I do myself for choosing, building, and tuning my arrows for the bow that I've set up. So in this first segment, I want to talk about the types of arrow shafts that are available so that you can understand the different benefits and characteristics to each of these styles. The first is going to be an aluminum shaft, and this is really the shaft that was responsible for really propelling archery because it had so many different options and sizes, and it was much different than some of the older wood shafts that were available before this. This aluminum arrow is the arrow that holds the highest indoor scores ever shot in target archery. So you can tell just by that alone that it's proven for consistency and a lot of that's because of the straightness of aluminum and also the consistency for how your components fit in that shaft. Now years ago there was a big swing towards carbon shafts because carbon gives you a lot of options for straightness, also for diameter, and it seems to have a lot less glare, and you just have way more options for the types of cosmetics you can put on it as well. You know, this is an all carbon shaft here, and you can tell that they've already put high definition graphics on the shaft just to help improve the looks. Now, one of the shafts that I've always preferred is an ACC type shaft, and that's an aluminum carbon shaft, which gives you the benefits to both of those previous shafts. This Easton ACC has an aluminum core tube and then a carbon exterior. So this gives you the best of both worlds, and it has no glare, and it also has great straightness and consistency values, which is gonna be critical. We'll talk about that in a later segment. There's also a newer style to that, which is exactly the flip side, which gives you a carbon interior with an aluminum exterior, and that's a full metal jacket. And now they offer this in a six millimeter size, which is actually a slightly different diameter than the original full metal jacket. This is a shaft that's been super popular in the last several years. Now, one of the most recent shafts that have hit the market is the micro diameter carbon shafts. This is an Easton injection, and you can tell that the, the actual overall size of this arrow is super small. And if you compare it to an aluminum arrow that we had to shoot years ago, you can tell there's a huge difference. So the benefits to having a smaller diameter arrow is the fact that you're gonna have less wind drift and you're gonna have better ballistics and also higher penetration because there's less friction as it's passing through. So all these shafts have slightly different options available for them, and some of these shafts may or may not be favorable for the type of hunting situation that you're gonna have. So in the next segment, I'm gonna go more into detail about sizing and spine and let you know how that relates to picking the right arrow. Knock and ready to rock. For this segment, I want to talk about arrow spine because arrow spine is absolutely critical to how well your bow is going to perform. And regardless of how good of a shooter you are, if you do not pick the right arrow to match your bow exactly, then you're selling yourself short and you will not be able to group as well as you're actually shooting. So arrow spine, in, as a simple definition, is really how much this arrow bends or flexes. And they measure that at a fixed length, hanging a fixed amount of weight on the arrow shaft to determine how much it actually bends. Now the numbers that you really need to know in order to choose the right arrow shaft are gonna be these. One, you have to know your exact peak weight on your bow. Not how much your bow can pull for peak weight, but what you're actually at. Because only a few pounds can make a big difference at how your arrow shaft responds to the bow that you're shooting. So you need to know, I shoot exactly 67 pounds on my bow. You also need to know what your arrow length is. You measure the length from the end of the knock to the cut of that shaft, and you need to know that. 
not necessarily your draw length or the length of your bow. You need to know the length of the actual shaft. From there, you need to know how much of point weight you're going to have in that arrow shaft. You need to know, do you like to shoot a 100 grain broadhead or 125 or 150? Because those numbers are all going to factor into how this arrow flexes. The more weight you push on the back of the arrow shaft, the more the arrow is going to flex. The longer the arrow shaft, the more it'll flex. The shorter the arrow shaft, the stiffer it will be. The more weight you put on the ends, the more it will flex. So these are all numbers that are going to be critical to you. Now, one thing that you're going to need to do is learn what your arrow spine needs to be for your setup. And different manufacturers have arrow selection charts just like this. And these are going to be important. And unfortunately, the different arrow manufacturers do not all have the exact same spine numbers. So I can't tell you that a 300 spine for one brand is going to be a stiff arrow because in another brand, it's actually a weaker arrow. That's unfortunate for a consumer. However, you can go to people's websites or pick up the catalogs. And again, as long as you know those three numbers, your pulling weight, your arrow length, and your point weight, you're going to be able to look on that chart and it's going to put you right into a group size that's going to allow you to know what spine you need to match your bow. Knock and ready to rock. Today I want to talk with you about knock fit because this is going to be super relative to how your arrows perform on your bow. Because if your knock fit is not proper, then what's going to happen is you're going to decrease your accuracy because of how that's actually coming off the string. So what I look for is I want to knock that when it clips on the string, you can hear a positive click, but I also want it to have the option to be able to turn freely in the serving. Because if your string slightly twists as you draw it back, you don't want that to actually twist your arrow one way or another on your arrow rest. Also, if you shoot, you don't want that really tight knock to pull that string too far forward before it actually clips off. So here's an example of a knock that's too tight. When it snaps on and I turn it, you can see that it actually turns my whole string. And as I shoot, this is going to take a tremendous amount of pressure to ever come off. That's going to greatly affect your accuracy. Now on the flip side of that, if you have a knock that the fit is too loose, it might clip on, but then you can be able to really spin it way too easy on the string. And if there's too much play and too much slop, then you have to worry about it either being inconsistent or worse yet, falling off when you're at full draw. So you really want to check your knock fit. And again, what I look for is I like to be able to hear a click and I like to have some play and I like it to be able to come off fairly easy. Now you're going to want to either select knocks that fit your string properly or you can also go to a local pro shop and have them put a slightly different diameter serving on there if you don't have the correct fit. Knock and ready to rock. Today I want to talk with you about your actual inserts and your components that fit into your arrow shafts because this match right here has a huge impact on accuracy and I found that you really get what you pay for when it comes to your components and your arrow shafts. You want to have an exact perfect match here with zero play. And if you take the inserts that come in your arrows and actually just see how they fit in the end of your shaft, then you'll be able to tell for yourself if you're getting what you pay for. The other thing is nowadays we don't just have the option on many shafts for just an aluminum insert, which is a standard weight for most of the shafts. Now you have the option of choosing a brass insert for a lot of different models that allows you to boost up your front of center or how much weight you have in the front of that arrow, which greatly helps 
for improving your accuracy with the fixed blade broadhead and also boosting your momentum and your penetration. So this insert right here is actually a 75 grain brass insert that has the ability to be broken off at the back so that you can reduce it 25 grains as well if you want. And again, choosing these components that are matched perfectly for the aero shaft that you want are critical. Now, recently there's been a design called a hit design or even a deep six design, which is a micro diameter design that allows you to countersink these components using a tool into the aero shaft, which then gives you the ability to actually use either a small sanding tool or an aero squaring device to actually square off the end of that shaft so that you can perfectly match your broadhead squarely with the end of that shaft, which is gonna greatly improve your accuracy and it also gives you the option to help perfectly align your blades with your veins. All of this is going to be critical to improving your accuracy, so I thought I'd give you just a little bit more knowledge on how your components can help you downrange. Knock and ready to rock. I want to talk with you about fletchings and how your fletching choices and fletching combinations can affect your accuracy. Now if we go back many many years we were limited to shooting feathers which were a great fletching option because they offered a tremendous amount of steering and control on an arrow. However they're very time consuming for installation and they're also much more maintenance when it comes to having these in rain or doing much travel with them. So we ended up gravitating towards plastic veins which are an awesome option because they adhere easy to a shaft, they travel better, and they also have much more durability. And if you'll notice, there's a wide variety of sizes and shapes now. And for example, for target archery, we shoot these smaller veins just like this, simply because they offer so much more ballistic advantages downrange because it's a minimal amount of drag so that we maintain more speed downrange and we also have minimal drift whenever we have a crosswind. However, if you're shooting a broadhead or any type of blade on the front of your arrow, a small vein like that is not going to offer the steering that you need. So we've gravitated towards either longer veins or shorter high profile veins so that we can still have the control for a broadhead. Now all of these are gonna have slight advantages or disadvantages ballistically because the more vein or more surface area that you have, the more drag you are also gonna have to go with it. So if you're the type of archer that does more longer range shooting, you're gonna to need to try to find a shorter vein option that lets you keep your ballistic advantages. Now, if you're a tree stand hunter and you like shooting a big fixed blade head, then you're not gonna have any problems sticking with a longer vein option. Now, in a later episode, I'm gonna show you how these different options can have different effects downrange. Knock and ready to rock. I'm going to show you how to properly cut your arrow shaft and also install your component. Now what you're going to want to make sure is that you have a certified arrow cutting saw. Do not try to make something yourself. You need to make sure for safety reasons for sure you have a saw made specifically for arrows. From there you're going to want to adjust your fixture that holds the back end of the arrow to the length to where you're going to cut your arrow at your desired overall length. Now if you don't know what that is, then what you'll need to do is take a full length arrow, draw your bow back with that arrow, and have someone mark it where you want it to be cut. Now I like to cut my arrow shafts about dead center in the riser of the bow. That way my broadhead is at least over or in front of my hand. I don't ever like to have a broadhead behind my hand, so I don't like to cut my arrow much shorter than the center of the bow riser. Now once you have your saw set to the proper length, from there you're going to want to make sure you always wear safety glasses 
And when the saw is on, you're going to want to make sure that you push the back end of your knock against the back of that fixture so that you're not having any play as you cut. And you'll want to rotate this arrow shaft evenly so that you have a perfectly symmetrical cut until you get all the way through that arrow shaft. Knock and ready to rock. Today I want to talk with you about how to properly install wraps on your arrow shafts because I really like to have a vinyl wrap or a cresting between the shaft itself and your fletching choice. Now if you're using a quick fletch, this is a pretty easy process. However, if you want to completely build your own, it's really, really simple. All you need to do is get a high quality vinyl wrap. And from there, you need to just make sure that you properly clean the arrow shaft itself, either using acetone or I'm a really big advocate of these Max Clean Wipes by AAE that you can get at LancasterArchery.com. And once that shaft is clean, then it's just a matter of taking your vinyl wrap, peeling it off. You lay that wrap upside down on a mouse pad. And I like to use one that has a clean edge that I can use as a reference. And from there, I'm going to align the edge of that vinyl wrap with the back edge of the cut of my arrow shaft. So we're just going to align those two edges, slide the arrow shaft towards that vinyl until it evenly contacts it. Then you just press down and roll. And that vinyl wrap is completely secure all the way around that arrow shaft. And from there, you're gonna clean this vinyl one more time to make sure that you're fully prepped to adhere your veins. Knock and ready to rock. We're gonna talk about how to easily fletch your arrows. And this is something I think every archer needs to know how to do themselves. The first thing that you're gonna need is an arrow jig. And there's several on the market. I've done really well with either the Bitsenberger jigs or the AAE jigs. Now with the Bitsenberger, you're gonna to have to make a few adjustments to make sure that it's set up properly because this jig gives you the options to have several different fletching configurations using these small screws here. You can choose whether you use a three fletch or a four fletch. Um, you can also choose, if you are shooting a four fletch, what the actual vein connection points are. Um, the other thing, you'll need to slightly adjust your clamp so that the base of your vein is perfectly aligned with the dead center of your arrow shaft. And you can also adjust it so that you have a choice in either your offset or a right or a left wing helical. So once you have your jig set properly, the next thing that you're going to need to do is take some veins and load them in your jig. I can normally put multiple ones in. Take either acetone or again one of these Max Clean AAE cleaning wipes and clean the base of your vein. From there, what you're going to want to do is take that vein and align it in your clamp. I normally make a small little mark so that I know where each of these veins need to always go because I really like to have my vein at one and three quarter inches from the throat of the knock to where the back of the vein is on the shaft. For me, that's where I've had my best grouping results. So once it's at that mark, I'll go ahead and take a glue designed specifically for the type of plastic vein or feather that you're using. In this case, I'm using an AAE Max vein, so I'm gonna use a Max Bond quick set glue and I'm gonna make a small bead from the top all the way to the bottom. When it comes to super glues or quick set glues, you wanna figure that less is often more. If you have excess, then your curing and your drying isn't gonna be preferable. So I'll lay a small bead and then I'll just take the edge of my finger and wipe that excess off so that I have a smooth glue bead down the base of that vein and it's going to be even from side to side. Then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take this clamp and I'll set it on the jig and I'll press it firmly 
against the arrow shaft so that I have an even and continual pressure from the top of that vein all the way to the bottom. And when you do this right, it is super easy and super fast and it gives you a lot of options to be just as creative as you want to be right at your home. Knock and ready to rock. All right, now that we've cut this shaft, we're gonna install the inserts. And it's gonna be important that you use the right type of adhesive depending on the type of arrow that you're using. Because if you're using a carbon shaft or if you're using a shaft that has a carbon core, you're not gonna to wanna to use any type of heat source on that carbon. You're gonna to wanna to use a two-part epoxy. Now, they recommend a slow cure epoxy. You can use a quicker drying epoxy, but it should be known that the faster something dries, normally the more brittle it will become. So for longevity, those slow cure epoxies are gonna be much more desirable. But to install something properly, all you need to do is mix your epoxy. You're gonna go ahead and put some of that on the end of the component and then also a little bit on the inside of the shaft. And then you're gonna apply it and twist it as it's going in, press it all the way down, and then wipe off the excess. Now I really like to stand mine vertically or if you're shooting a broadhead and you've already fletched this arrow, now's a really good time to put a broadhead on that insert and actually get it aligned properly with your veins. Now, if you're shooting an aluminum arrow or an aluminum core arrow, then you can use hot melt using a torch. And for this, what I wanna show you is you're gonna to wanna to take your component you're gonna to wanna to heat that component and heat the hot melt. And then you're gonna to wanna to slide that into the shaft. And then I let it cool before wiping the excess off. You never wanna heat the carbon or the arrow itself. It's better to have a point in the component so that you can actually heat up the point and let the radiant heat actually heat up the hot melt or the insert itself. So I'm just gonna show you how easy it is using hot melt. Now what I'll do is I'll let this dry, and when it does, you can easily peel off that excess glue. Knock and ready to rock. Well, I'm confident by now you understand how to pick the right shaft and now build the right shaft. So, for this segment, I want to encourage you to take what you've learned and put it to use with a number of different combinations. I'm just finishing up a process that I do on all my setups to really determine what type of fletching configuration I need. So what I've done here is I'll take a dozen arrows and I'll actually divide it up and fletch a few with one type of fletching, a few with another type, a few with another type. And then we're going to do a test later on and I'm going to show you the things that you need to look for in order to decide what is really going to be the best option for you. This is a really smart investment for your time. There's three inch, four inch, there's high profile two inch veins or there's a low profile four fletch. These are all options that I've used over the years in certain bows like certain setups. So we're gonna go ahead and let these dry and then we're gonna head out in the next segment 
I'm going to show you just exactly what you need to do to put this to good use. Knock and ready to rock. Put a few more arrows in there. All right, come check it out. In these last knocked and ready to rock segments, I'm gonna show you exactly the final steps that I go through to get my arrows grouping just like this. And believe me, there's a big difference between the same shooter and the same bow being able to shoot like this or shoot like this. And it's just a small few simple steps really. The one thing that I wanna cover with you first is you need to make sure that you're gonna be shooting on fairly level ground and you also need to make sure that you're shooting without the wind because this is going to be really important to make sure that it's not altering these tests. Also, if you know you just made a terrible shot during these grouping results, just pull that arrow and eliminate it from the equation. And again, I'm going to talk with you about these last few steps in the next Knocked and Ready to Rock segments. However, I do want to say I've already paper tuned this bow and this is something that we covered in season five of the segment. So you can go back at knockontv.com and look at last year's bow build and you're going to be able to see how to paper tune before you come out and start these last few tests. Knock and ready to rock. All right, well, it's a perfect morning. I've got this quiver full of all of the arrows that we had fletched in a previous episode with different vein configurations. I've taken the first set and I've sighted in right here to distance I'm comfortable with of 60 yards. So I'm gonna shoot this full quiver of arrows down at the target, and then I'm gonna talk with you about what exactly it is that we're looking for for a perfect match. <laughs> All right, well, this is a perfect result. So what we're doing is we're taking a shaft that we're fairly certain is perfectly matched with our bow. And we've decided to use several different fletching options first to really tell us what this bow is liking for an actual arrow build. A lot of people don't go through this homework and believe me, Sometimes these results can be like this for one bow and then for a different bow or even a slightly different poundage, these results can be completely different. So here's what I'm looking for. On my initial setups, I go ahead and shoot a full group of arrows and I'm really confident that my shots were all a good shot, which is important. If it's not a good shot, go down and pull that arrow and shoot it one more time. But what this is showing us is that there's actually two different options that are doing the best. So this option with the four fletch has a great grouping. 
The option that has a three inch low pro profile vein also has a great grouping. Now on this four inch fletch for this particular matchup, it's giving me a vertical grouping. Now on the short high profile vein for this particular setup is giving me a horizontal grouping. So at this point, what I've done is I've narrowed down what type of fletching configuration that this exact setup, poundage, aero build, including a lighted knock and the weight point that I wanna use, this has narrowed it down to two options that are really gonna get me in the ballpark before I do my initial final tuning with my rest. So this is a great, again, it's a starting point, it's a learning point. It allows us to narrow out things Sometimes people go in a shop and they just grab the arrow that's right on the rack. And a lot of times it can be good enough, but there's always the option of having something slightly different that can give you better results. Now at 60 yards, a lot of people might argue that this is pretty good. I would say if I have a bow that could group five inches apart vertically with one setup or five inches apart horizontally with another setup, or I could have two different setups that are two inches apart, which would you prefer? This is a great way to just eliminate things that might not match perfectly with the setup that you've chose. Knock and ready to rock. All right, now for this last segment, we're gonna do something called walk back tuning. So I've went ahead and selected the vein configuration that I like. I know I've got a good match for spine with the bow that I have. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually check to make sure that my arrow rest setting is perfect for left and right. Because if it's not, what'll happen is at the closer distances, your arrows will be center. And the further and further you get away from the closer targets, the more that arrow will drift. And a lot of times you'll see erratic arrow flight. So this is called walk back tuning or also known as French tuning. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take the arrow that I wanna shoot and I'm gonna go ahead and sight this in to where I'm shooting exactly dead center at about three yards. Now for me, that's my 50 yard pin. So after I shoot and have it zeroed in right here at three yards, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shoot another arrow, or for a lot of people, it's best to shoot a group of arrows down at a 50 yard target using that exact same pin and make sure you do not move your sight after that first shot because where those arrow lands is going to determine what we need to do to fine tune our left and right on our arrow rests to make sure that this arrow and bow are matched perfectly. Okay, you can see my left to right is exactly exactly dead center. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shoot down at 50 yards using that exact same pin. Okay, now let's go down and I'll show you what this group means. Okay, well here's what this test is showing us. Now again, we're using the same pin. I made sure my level was perfect. We don't have any wind. So I'm sighted in up close and now that I'm shooting back far and it's best to do this with groups so you can see where your grouping is. But for shortness for film, I'm just doing one arrow and I was confident with that shot. But it's showing me that we're grouping left of center, which tells me that arrow is going further and further and further left the further that arrow travels. And what that means to me is that my arrow rest is slightly off center. And that's what this walk back tuning or French tuning shows us. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna loosen my left to right adjustment on my arrow rest and I am gonna micro, little bit goes a long way, micro adjust my arrow rest in the direction towards the center of that spot. So I'm gonna need to move it to the right since I hit left. If I was over here, I'd need to move it left. Very small increments. So I'm gonna make this adjustment. Then I'm going back up to the close target to sight in again and repeat this test. When we've got this arrow rest set in the perfect left to right adjustment for the arrow and the bow matching, we're gonna be able to shoot the same exact left to right path from up close all the way to out far. So let's make an adjustment and see what happens next. Okay, so I've moved my arrow rest. Now I've gone ahead and sighted, moved my sight to sight back in right here at the close target because we moved our rest, so we've gotta move our sight. And again, we sight in here, now we're gonna do the same thing down there. Okay, right in that same hole. Now, we're gonna shoot down range again and see what we get this time. looks pretty good let's go see what it looks like all right well here's the perfect result and this is what this test is all about you can see after making those adjustments that we talked about we're now able to shoot exactly in a dead center line right up close and then we're able to hold that same line at a distance and what that tells us is that our arrow is following the same path of the sight all the way just make sure that you're always watching your level do this test on level ground without any wind, and I can guarantee you that if you follow all these steps that we've covered throughout this total Knocked and Ready to Rock series, you're gonna have an unbelievable shooting arrow to match perfectly with your bow.